Welcome to the optical communication course. So we have seen a numerical aperture earlier and that uh, numerical aperture means what? What is the acceptance angle of your particular fiber? And uh, uh, that numerical aperture is depending upon that refractive index of core and cladding. So uh, we have uh, earlier said that for the numerical aperture for a given particular fiber, this one is about a, a core axis. This one is about your core. And this one is nothing but a, a cladding here. This particular a region is nothing but the cladding now. So in this case, what happened? Whichever the ins rays are incident. But whichever the rays are incident there or fit this particular here, these rays are incident. So these rays will make their that angle that is uh, more than the critical angle, then and then your signal will be propagating through the fiber. Now that rays passing through the from this air we have to the fiber and then when it comes to this uh, uh, fiber then again it will propagating through the fiber now our aim is about to see that how much will be the acceptance angle because whichever the rays are accepted by this fiber so that that will propagating through the fiber here so that cone is nothing but acceptance angle cone And this particular angle, okay, that is called as a acceptance angle. That is called as a acceptance angle of the fiber. That is about you can say it is about a theta. A. We go through. Now, for the given acceptance angle values, we have obtained that equations for the numerical aperture, and that numerical aperture is nothing but equal to n a is equal to what under root of n1 square minus n2 square now in this case n1 is nothing but the refractive index of a core and n2 is the refractive index of a cladding and again uh, we have considered that for the refractive index difference okay so we can say that del is equal to relative refractive index difference and that relative refractive index difference del and if you consider the case that del is very very less than one in that case a numerical aperture can be rewrite in terms of a relative refractive index difference that will be is equal to n1 under root of twice of del n. Now, uh, this na we can say is nothing but what we say it is about a numerical aperture, not angle that is acceptance angle here, numerical aperture. And that numerical aperture that depend upon the difference of this core and cladding index there. This numerical aperture is independent of a diameter of a fiber core. Now this one is about your fiber core. We say we have the a fiber here. This one is about a fiber here. And we say this is about a diameter of a fiber core, okay. And this one is nothing but a, a cladding. This one is a core. And this is nothing but a diameter of fiber. So that numerical aperture is not depend upon the diameter of a core of a fiber. It is totally depending upon that refractive index of the fiber core and a cladding. Means it is depending upon that N1 and N2. It is not depending upon that structure of a fiber. Okay. It is not depending upon the 
structure of firm. So now uh, we can consider here a numerical values that uh, numerical aperture of a given particular fiber. Whenever we consider that, uh, whatever the refractive index for the score and a cladding. So there are few numericals based on this numerical aperture. I'll share you the that uh, file to you later. So we'll proceed here for the which of the theoretical portion is remaining that we'll consider here. Next is about a skew ray. That skew ray means that rays are transmitted through this particular fiber and that rays are passing without a given axis, without a uh, axis of the particular fiber. Means what? We have a fiber core. This one is about, you can say, it is about a core of fiber. And this one we supposed to because this one is about a, a cladding now. Now the rays are propagating through the fiber. It has some axis. This one is about your axis of a given particular fiber. Now, whenever the rays are incident, okay, at any point or any position in particular core, then what will happen? That rays will propagate in any other fashion. Okay. Or we can say that likewise. So ray will not propagating straight away that we have seen earlier. Just like it is reflected from this boundaries of a core and cladding. Here the rays are moving in a different ways. Okay, at a different particular position. So now if you see the particular fiber core. So in that case, that rays are looks like a helix. Now supposed to be if you consider here. So it means your rays are propagating inside the fiber. Likewise. Eh? this particular structure here and if you cut the section of the given particular fiber so it will looks like that rays are propagating by a structure of a helix there whichever the light is propagating through the fiber okay so that light is not uniformly distributed here and they have the reflection at a different places they have the reflection from the different places, not only exactly the boundary of a core and cladding. Because of that reflection from any other place, so that rays are generated. Means this is not just like a disturbance for this particular light rays propagating to the fiber them. So that diffraction is occur, or you can say that a reflection from this particular place is occur because of that whatever the incident light or a incident rays and it is totally depending merit uh, that meridional rays means what we say that that rays are propagating through the axis of the fiber that is propagating through the axis of fiber core axis of fiber okay so but other rays generally we say that they are reflecting from the boundaries of a core and cladding but these rays are propagating with a different uh, ways or a, there will be a delay for the given propagation. Okay, so there will be propagation. If you see that, if you measure the output here, or there will be a loss inside a given particular fiber. So that rays they belongs to even if we say that they belongs to the acceptance angle of a fiber, but some rays they are propagating through the in the case of a this particular wave here. Okay, that is called as a helix wave of a propagation takes place inside the fiber. So now before we conduct uh, conclude that how your light rays are propagating through the fiber, we need to see some particular basic. So what are the more theory of a propagation there? So we consider here a more theory. 
for your optical propagation for your optical propagation now mode theory means what what are the various modes occur what are the various modes occur inside the particular fiber just the mode we can define that waves or that particular rays has a difference in the wavelength there has the difference in the wavelength or they are reflecting with a different boundary the different uh, core and colliding boundaries okay at different places there I mean there is a variation in the what you can say the wavelength or variation in that particular rays there so to understand this particular mode theory for the optical propagation so we should know that how your wave is generated and then we can go ahead or we can proceed that how your wave is propagating through it. so all you people know that we are propagating okay propagation of wave in a free space that you know that okay uniform plane you already you people know that so in this case what happened we have the field component of electric field and a magnetic field now suppose to be we say that this is about a direction of propagation of a wave in a z direction and this one is about you can say that is about x and this one is a, a y now now i say that my electric field vector is along with a y so in that case your wave will be looks like means we have the electric field vector is likewise okay this is about your electric field vector and this one is propagating through the z direction now in another case i say that a wave means what it has a component of electric field vector as well as a magnetic field vector but the magnetic field vector is perpendicular to each other we can say that this one is about you this we here we can say that this is about your magnetic field vector now how your wave is looks like this one is about a direction of propagation of a wave this one is the direction of propagation of a wave and we have a electric field component that is about e and we have the magnetic field component we have the electric field component we have the magnetic field at another instant we have the electric field component likewise this is about u or e this one we can say it is about h and we have the magnetic field component okay e and likewise so then at another point your electric field vector looks like then this one is your magnetic field vector so if you write the wave equation you can say that that electric field component and magnetic field component okay we should have to write that wave equation in terms of what you can say electric field vector or magnetic field vector but how it comes it comes based on the maxwell's equation and this one is about your faraday's law this one we can say it is about your ampere's law and all these equations we have written in terms of a free space there okay so that we can say that this becomes equal to zero this becomes equal to zero these are all called as a maxwell's equation faraday's law here ampere circuit law and these are the gauss laws now using this particular reference of this maxwell's equations we can find out the wave equation to find the wave equations we need to convert with all the equations in terms of what in terms of a harmonic field 
and then we can solve the wave equation there. Or simply, we can put in the same time domain and we can obtain it. To obtain in terms of the time harmonic field, so we need to consider that rho by rho t is to be expressed with respect to a j omega. Now this omega, omega means what you can say? It has the component of a real any imaginary term. So generally we consider here that propagation in that particular respect. Okay, so we'll see that how to solve it. So we consider that to solve the wave equation that is about a del cross del cross e and that del cross del cross e means we have a del cross e here del cross of del cross e is equal to what here we have the v bar do v bar by do t there and that we can say that del cross of del cross e is nothing but what del cross of minus do v bar by do t and if you simplify it b is nothing but what mu h del cross h del cross is nothing but 2d bar by 2t and that is nothing but d is equal to f small e so after solving this and this particular factor is nothing but what del of del dot e minus del square e and this particular factor is we can say that del cross of e is nothing but del cross of h here so minus will be common here and we can say that this equation becomes what mu h here we have the mu and then we have the del cross of h is nothing but the do d bar by do t that is nothing but a square here do d bar by do t square and we get the equation directly that is about a del square of e is equal to the epsilon del square of e here by do t square by and this is the wave equation in terms of what electric field component. So you can say that this is called as a Helmholtz wave equation. This is called as a Helmholtz wave equation. But this one is applicable we have considered in terms of a time domain for a free space. Similarly, we can write the Helmholtz wave equation in terms of magnetic field. That is again the same. We have small do square h by do t square. Okay, these are the about the Helmholtz wave equation in terms of electric field and a magnetic field. But if you take a reference in terms of a your wave is propagating, this means all these equations are okay. say that your wave is propagating in a free space. This is your uniform plane wave. When we say it is about the word uniform plane wave, there is nothing but what your electric field component and mag electric field component and a magnetic field components are perpendicular to each other and both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation this is about your electric field so if we solve this okay if you take it terms and again solve this particular equation so we will get that this particular constant is nothing but for the propagation over here. And that propagation constant we are getting because we say it is forwarded. Okay, we can say that wave is propagating. So we can solve it, we'll get that a propagation constant. And that propagation constant, it has the term of what? Gamma is equal to what? Alpha plus J beta. This one is about your alpha. and uh, that is about your beta we say that a propagation vector so now in the case of phase constant and we can say it attribution okay so in the case of that propagation constant we can write the wave equation in terms of a propagation vector so in that case if you obtain this propagation constant we'll get that a term of a phase velocity with respect to whatever the propagation constant. If we consider the phase velocity, it is nothing but what under root of mu f naught. One is equal to under root of mu f naught. And if you solve it for this proper here, proper way, that phase velocity is equal to what under root of a 
be often as the same. And if you further solve, we consider that it is not belongs to the free space here. So we can say that mu is equal to mu zero mu r, f null is equal to f null zero f null r. Now this term we can solve it one by under root of mu zero f null zero. And this one is nothing but what we can say that is about it mu r f null r. And this one by mu zero f null zero is nothing but the velocity of a light in a free space. If we say that c is equal to 3 into 10 to power 8, and that is equal to what? Under root of a mu 0, epsilon 0. This one. So we can we can obtain that what is the mu 0 and epsilon 0, and we will get that the velocity. Okay. So now, in the case of a optical communication, we need to see that what are the rays are propagating. Okay. What are the rays are propagating and here we say that a gamma or some people they have used the word a k here and that is nothing but what we can say it is about a propagation vector or a propagation constant if we consider that in terms of propagation constant or propagation vector we can write the equation of a wave in terms of a psi zero and exponential of a we can say that j omega t minus k to r that's about the direction of propagation and you can say that your view is propagation with a particular phase shift there. and that vector propagation vector we can calculate we say that it is nothing but a twice pi by lambda that is we say it gives a direction of propagation or you can say that a free space wave number you can say that free space wave number and this gamma that uh, sorry this lambda we say it is not what you can say a in terms of optical communication we say that it is nothing but the optical wavelength in a vacuum okay in a vacuum so using this particular theory okay using this particular theory of a whatever the optical theory or optical wave propagation there we can calculate that what are the various modes occurs in that particular fiber there so modes in a if you consider that a mode in a guide that coaxial cable is a cylindrical suppose that cylinder is nothing but a guide now for propagation of the wave now we can word we have used that a guided wave which in an optical fiber we have a core and that light are guided to this particular core so that's how you can say that word a hey, guided view so mode in a guide okay that mode in a guide which in terms of the optical fiber it is a guide is acting as a core and light is propagating so mode in a this particular guide okay mode in the guide here so now we use the word that is about a guide which why word guide because that light are guided by this particular core light are guided by this particular core so that's why we can say that about a guided wave. in the case of a fiber in the case of fiber we say your light rays are propagating at some particular point at this particular point if you see that now we say that they about just like a incident here and you see that a light is incident from this particular place that is about your vector vector is propagating so then it will be reflected from this particular place it will be reflected here likewise so this is nothing but a light is guiding through this medium here but at that point 
which are the vector we have so it has the we can say that it has a vertical component and it has the horizontal component or can say that vector okay so that wave vector the wave vector means we can say that direction generally we consider it is propagating in the z direction the wave is propagating in the z direction you can say that this one is about your x okay this one is about your x component here so a axis of a fiber here we suppose we can say that is about a core now so if there is a propagation constant or that factor with respect to what in the z direction and another factor is about with respect to that x shape since this rail we have it is propagating so that wave vector that wave vector can be solved using this two component direction of in terms of a z direction and direction in terms of a x direction so now that is about we can say it is about a plane this is about your xz plane your wave is propagating in a xz plane and for this xz plane your propagation constant that we can say that beta x or we can say that wave vector in terms of what beta x and beta z we can calculate so beta z means what this one is, we say it is about a angle of a theta so in that case a beta z is with respect to that whatever the values of this particular p here we consider and what are the various medium so right now we can say it is about a core the core it has n1 and this one is about a cladding it has a n2 so beta beta z or beta x beta z is means what axis and this one is about a perpendicular to this particular axis so theta okay that is about a cos of theta and this one is about your n1 is the core refractiveness and your wave is guided by this factor that is about a wave number is about your k here k is your wave number so that's why you can write that is about k n1 sin of theta k n1 cos of theta okay we can write our equation in terms of this way means your field vector is propagating your field is propagating in the z direction now we see here again i'll redraw the core and cladding and this is nothing but the axis of a fiber now incident ray here we have will be getting okay so that rays are there so now at the same point maybe some rays will come okay likewise so we have the ray we can say that this one is act as the guide means guide means what it is a core okay that's nothing but a core we can say and this one is nothing but a cladding here so at these boundaries if you wanted to see that your wave vector this one is about you can see it is about a wave vector if you calculate if you see that at this particular boundary and if you say that instead of a light rays if you say that in in terms of a your electric field okay we can say that whatever the mode propagation we are saying in terms of the electric field term so in that case this is about your core now this one is about your core here and this is about your axis of your fiber so means at the center okay we can say that the mode will be looks like what it is about your electric field this is about your electric field it will be looks like now here we say that a wave vector only 
because it is depending upon that factor of a wavelength. Why factor of wavelength? Because we say that lambda is equal to what? A 2 pi by k. K is nothing but the wave number. And it is about a lambda. So only one ray, we have the one particular mode. So for a given particular field, if you see that, if I project a line here from this particular place here, okay, we can consider that a light rays are propagating at that particular places, now at this particular places. Now here, we should consider your electric field looks like we have at the center we say it is to be maximum. This is about a maximum here. But if you consider the electric field distribution in terms of, okay, if you consider the electric field distribution with respect to the, whatever the field component, the electric field will be, looks like, sorry, okay, so likewise. Your electric field distributions will be likewise. At this particular wherever we have that maxima or where that vector crosses. So this there will be maximum and here will be maximum. So total field will be looks like your electric field will be look like. This way we can express that modes in a particular fiber. Modes in a particular fiber. And that we are expressed in terms of a transverse electric field. Okay, this one we can write or we give the rays of a propagation we are saying that are correspond to the that word we say a yeah, transverse electric field. Transverse is more means what? It is about a perpendicular. We say earlier here that is about we have the uniform plane where we have the electric field and magnetic field component. This is about your H, this is about your E. H this is about E. H this is about E. Now this field component are transverse in nature. Means your electric field and magnetic field components are transverse. But they are perpendicular. So uniform plane view, if you say the, what is what do you mean by uniform plane view? A view in which your electric field component and magnetic field component are transverse in a nature that is about electric field component and a magnetic field components are perpendicular to each other means transverse and both are that electric field and magnetic field vector both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of wave means here we say that is in terms of a wave we have electric field component magnetic field component so if we say only for the electric field vector we can say transverse electric field vector for the magnetic field we can say that is about a transverse magnetic field vector so d transverse electric field vector and a transverse magnetic field vector tm so t and tm okay we can say that a transverse electric field vector is about a t and a tm is nothing but about a transverse magnetic field vector but we relate only to understand clearly the factor so we use a transverse electric field vector and using that we can say that array model or you can say that how your light is propagating through the fiber and what are the various modes occur sorry It is uh, now we can relate here various modes occur so for the given particular fiber. Now, this one we can just consider that the body core, this one is about our axis of a core here, and at this particular boundaries, okay, at this particular boundaries, we say your electric field will, vector will be looks like here we have the electric field vector so electric field will, vector will be looks like 
maximum here. Okay, this one is about maximum. Then it will be crossing here. A maximum here. Okay, sorry. So means it will come here and it will end here. So this is about your electric field vector. This one is about your electric field vector. But why how it comes? Because we say that your rays are propagating. Okay, likewise. Now we have considered the small friction here. Some of the rays will propagating inside this particular cladding area. So that is called as a cladding penetration. But if there is no cladding penetration occurs, if there is no cladding penetration occurs, so in that case, how your ray will be looks like? Okay, if there is no cladding penetration occurs, then how your ray will be looks like? Just like we can consider that at particular boundaries, this is about your core and cladding. So your axis here. So we can consider directly here we are saying. Okay, at this particular, at this particular place, we say likewise because there is no cladding. But here we have consider small portion. Okay, here we have consider that the part is small portion of the electric field because it is a penetration of particular light here. And just we consider that this is nothing but a single ray of a mode of a propagation, so that's why m is equal to one. So that's why it is called as a T1. If we consider that for the another case, okay, if we consider another case there, so now in that case, we have the Now this is called as a T2 mode. TE1 mode means what? One means what? That electric field vector crosses. That crossing of the electric field vector it is about a one here. That crossing of the electric vector with the reference is nothing but a one. And here we have a crossing is nothing but a two. Electric field line it crosses twice here, so that's why it is called as a T2 mode. If you consider that another case here. For the T3 mode, that rays are propagating. We say that it is same here. Okay, there is penetration. Okay, that is same here. Now, in the case of a T3 mode, this is supposed to be axis here. So you can consider that your rays are propagating. One crossing here. Another crossing here, another crossing here. Okay, so likewise, this is nothing but a portion of a depth of penetration. One crossing, another crossing, another. Means so that's why this is nothing but a T three mode. So at the end, if you find out how your electric field vector looks like, so according to that, we can say that that modes will be occur. So generally, we will consider that the case of that uh, dominant mode and all. Okay, so that is that part particular part we need to be consider. Okay, and uh, in the case of your optical fiber, we just say that your light is propagating through the fiber here. 